Thank you, Mr. Golanovic, for moderating the discussion. But before we move on uh, to our next and last session for today, um, I would like to comment on what we've seen so far from our panelists. We all understand that there are a lot of things that we can achieve through sports. We can create leaders, better communicators, team players that value the importance of collaboration. We can raise confident individuals that believe in themselves. We can give people purpose that can be extremely motivating, especially for young individuals. But I think from what we've seen so far, there is one thing that we can achieve. The most important thing is that we can, through sports, instill hope to everybody. And these panelists proved that today. So a big round of applause for what we heard so far from all our panelists. And without any more delay, we will move on to our final uh, presentation for today with the title, Investing in Human Capital for Social and Economic Development. For this session, I would like to call on stage the co-founder and first ever captain of the Palestinian women's national football team, a woman that has broken through countless social and political barriers to become a role model to women and girls throughout the Middle East and beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage Ms. Hane Talier. Thank you. So, good morning, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know where the shares have gone. I, th I think our session is special today because uh, our uh, uh, speakers will have the TED Talk style. Each uh, presenter, a speaker will come on stage for 15 minutes, and then afterwards we have the chance to have a Q&A. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Honey, and that's my real name, uh, surprisingly. <laughs> Um, I come from Palestine, and uh, when I was seven years old, actually, I started playing football in the narrow streets of Bethlehem. And of course, to grow up in Bethlehem, in Palestine, under the most difficult uh, political, cultural, social circumstances, I wanted to play football. Of course, my father refused that I play football, especially that I was playing in the streets with the boys. And every time he comes back from work, he will get so furious and take me home and ask me to promise not to go back to the streets again. But every time he comes back from work, I will be playing in the streets with the boys. So every time it was the same, punishment, promising not to play again. But my mom at that time played an interesting role and she said, just let her Maybe when she's 14, 15, she will stop playing football because she will care about the husband, uh, the future, having babies, etc. the normal norms growing up in such a culture. But little did they know, when I became 15, I started to realize football is much more than just a game. It was about everything for me. First of all, identity. You know, growing up in a political circumstances, not recognized in such a country, it's hard to believe that tomorrow might ever come. But football gave me security, football gave me freedom, football empowered me to empower other girls in my community, in my region, to change their lives through this beautiful game, which is about fair play, justice, equality on the pitch. But we wanted to transfer that off the pitch. And that's why we started the women's national team. We started to growing from two, three, four players to hundreds of players playing football in Palestine. And this is the message that I have here today. It's football and sports has the power to change lives. It managed to change my life 
from the streets of Bethlehem to the world stages to become a champion for peace and to start working in FIFA and represent many organizations worldwide through this power. And what football indeed has given me, it's our chance and with my fellow champions to give it back to societies. We heard about all the stories that, that happened this morning and uh, we shared together that through sports, there is a huge power to make difference and to believe that no barriers, no walls, no destruction, no challenges can stop us to dream and to hope for a better future and to believe that the sky is our limit. And with this, actually, I will kick off our, our, fair, our session, which is about investing in the human capital through sports, through football, uh, for a better economic situation, development, for a better society. Because when we empower put people, or youth, or children, or women through sports, we absolutely empower the entire societies. And uh, today I have a very impressive speakers that will share their stories on stage and uh, inspire uh, with their testimonials. The first speaker I have is Mike Cetus. He is um, a professional amputee blade runner. His passion for running and athletics along his dream of participating in the Olympic Games were not shuttered even after an accident that changed his life. Three months after his accident, Mike was back on track, training hard to compete in his first race with a prosthetic leg. Medalist, at the European Championship. He won the World Champion in London 2017, beating the 400 meters T44 world record. Before he comes on stage, we have a video to share about his story.
So ladies and gentlemen, Mike Seats. Καλησπέρα σε όλους. Θέλω να ευχαριστήσω την Περιφέρεια Νοτιού Αιγαίου και το Forum Peace and Sports για την πρόσκληση και τη φιλοξενία. Ευχαριστώ πολύ για το θερμό χειροκρότημα. Σήμερα είμαι εδώ για να σας πω την προσωπική μου ιστορία και πώς ο αθλητισμός με βοήθησε στο να ξεπεράσω μια δύσκολη κατάσταση και να το πάρω ίσως θετικά και να κάνω αυτά που έχω κάνει μέχρι σήμερα. Είμαι αθλητής από έξι ετών, αθλητής στίβου. Έχω περάσει από πολλά αθλήματα. Έχω πάει και σε ποδόσφαιρο, έχω πάει και σε μπάσκετ, έχω κάνει και τάκη βοντό, έχω κάνει και ποδήλατο, αλλά ο στίβος ήταν το άθλημα που με κέρδισε από την πρώτη στιγμή. Γενικά μου άρεσε να, να αθλούμε, να, να τρέχω, να πηγαίνω στη γειτονιά με το ποδήλατο. Γενικά, οτιδήποτε είχε σχέση με τον αθλητισμό ήταν για μένα παιχνίδι. Έκανα αρκετά αθλήματα, έκανα παράλληλα με το στίβο, έκανα αρκετά κυβωτό για πολλά χρόνια, αλλά δεν μπορούσα να συνεχίσω δύο αθλήματα, καθώς γίνονταν πιο απαιτητικό ο στίβος. Έπρεπε να κάνω περισσότερες ώρες προπόνηση, είχα το σχολείο, είχα τα μαθήματά μου, οπότε έκανα μόνο στίβο. Έκανα, πέρασα και από εκεί από πολλά αγωνίσματα, έκανα άλμα εισύψος, έκανα 110 μέτρα μπόδια, έκανα 400 μέτρα μπόδια, όπου ήταν και το αγώνισμά μου μέχρι το 2013. Είχα συμμετοχή στην Εθνική Ομάδα, είχα πανελλήνια μετάλλια, αλλά το αγαπούσα πάρα πολύ, όπως και το απλά να τρέχω στον δρόμο. Το έκανα όταν ήμουν off-season, επειδή όταν ε, έκανα προπόνηση στο, είχα τους αγώνες μου, δεν μπορούσα να τρέχω στον δρόμο. Αλλά όταν είχα την ξεκούρασή μου, έκανα απόλυτα στην πόλη της Ρόγου, έτρεχα. Το 2013, έτσι ξαφνικά, ήρθε ένα ατύχημα. Ήμουν με τη μηχανή στον δρόμο. Συνάντησα κάτι εμπόδια μπροστά μου, σε έναν δρόμο που δεν είχε φως. Οπότε, τα είδα λίγο τελευταία στιγμή. Έτσι, πήγα να τα αποφύγω, δεν το κατάφερα. Χτύπησα με το δεξί μου πόδι στον ένα πάγκο. Το πρώτο πράγμα που σκέφτηκα, επειδή ήμουν μόνο στο σημείο, ήταν ότι έπρεπε να επιβιώσω. Έτσι κάλεσα το στενοφόρο. Και είπα ότι αν καταφέρω να το ξεπεράσω αυτό και ζήσω, γιατί ήταν, πολύ, ήταν δύσκολο, δύσκολος τραυματισμός, ήταν, ε, είχα πολύ αιμορραγία, γενικά ήταν σοβαρό. Έλεγα ότι αν το ξεπεράσω, εκείνη τη στιγμή που δεν έχασα τις αισθήσεις μου, θα θα είμαι τυχερός. Οπότε πήγα στο νοσοκομείο, έγινα κάποια χειρουργία, τελικά έγινε ο ακροτηριασμός. Και αυτό που ένιωθα εγώ είναι ότι ήμουν τυχερός μετά από όλο αυτό, αφού χτύπησα μόνο το πόδι μου και είμαι καλά γενικά στην υγεία μου. Ένιωθα πολύ τυχερός. Οι γύρω μου δεν μπορούσαν να το καταλάβουν αυτό. Ε, το θεωρούσαν κάτι πολύ δυσάρεστο, σίγουρα είναι δυσάρεστο, αλλά θα ήταν πιο δυσάρεστο να μην ήμουν εκεί, όπως και να μην ήμουν εδώ σήμερα. Τελικά, σιγά σιγά το κατάλαβαν, γιατί με έβλεπαν χαρούμενο. Εγώ το, το μόνο πράγμα που είχα στο μυαλό μου ήταν να ξανατρέξω. Δεν σκεφτόμουν ούτε πότε θα περπατήσω, τίποτα. Το μόνο πράγμα ήταν να βγω και να κάνω αυτό που έκανα και πριν, να τρέχω. Έτσι, μετά από τρεις μήνες, αφού βγήκα από το νοσοκομείο, κατάφερα να βάλω το πρώτο μου πρόσθετο μέλος. Όταν ήμουν στο νοσοκομείο, είχα ρωτήσει τους γιατρούς και μου είπαν μετά από έξι μήνες. Αλλά δεν μου άρεσε σαν ιδέα και δεν το κράτησα. Οπότε, μετά από τρεις μήνες, κατάφερα να βάλω το πρόσθετο μέλος. Ξεκίνησα αμέσως να γυμνάζομαι, χωρίς να χάνω χρόνο. Ήμουν πολύ χαρούμενος με αυτό. Με βοήθησαν και οι προσθετικοί μου σε αυτό, από την πρώτη στιγμή. 
Πήγαινα κάθε μέρα στο γυμναστήριο, έκανα ό,τι μπορούσα. Ε, ξεκίνησα μετά να τρέχω σιγά σιγά και αμέσως ε, πήγα στον πρώτο μου αγώνα. Συμμετείχα στον πρώτο μου αγώνα, όπου ήταν ε, ένας αγώνας που, που συμμετείχα και πριν, με αρτιμελείς αθλητές. Στην αρχή, επειδή ήμουν με φόρμα, δεν είχαν καταλάβει τι, τι έχει γίνει. Όταν το είδαν, σοκαρίστηκαν λίγο, αλλά θετικά. Αυτό που μου έδωσε δύναμη να καταφέρω να ξεπεράσω όλη αυτή τη δυσκολία και να γυρίσω αυτό το αρνητικό γεγονός σε θετικό, σίγουρα μεγάλο μερίδιο της ευθύνης προέρχεται από το, από το Στίβο. Ο Στίβος μου, έ, μου έμαθε να, είμαι, να έχω πειθαρχία, να έχω υπομονή και επιμονή. Με έκανε και λίγο πιο σκληρό σαν άνθρωπο. Αλλά πάνω απ' όλα αγαπούσα πολύ αυτό που έκανα. Και για να καταφέρω να ξανακάνω αυτό, είχα στο μυαλό μου μόνο να τρέξω και δεν σκεφτόμουν τίποτα άλλο. Και σίγουρα η, η αγάπη από την οικογένειά μου, τους φίλους μου, που με στήριξαν σε αυτή τη δύσκολη κατάσταση. Αλλά βασικά ο αθλητισμός με βοήθησε να ξεπεράσω αυτό που μου συνέβη. Τρία χρόνια μετά το ατύχημα, συμμετείχα στους Παραολυμπιακούς Αγώνες που το είχα στόχο από την πρώτη στιγμή. Έκανα δύο φορές παγκόσμιο ρεκόρ, έκανα όσο πιο πολλά αγωνίσματα μπορούσα, γιατί ήθελα να το ευχαριστηθώ. Έκανα 100 μέτρα, συμμετείχα στα 100, στα 200, στα 400, στο Άλμα Ισμήκος και στη Συνταλλοδρομία 4x100. Έκανα τα πάντα. Τελευταίο ήταν το αγωνίσμα των 400 μέτρων, που έκανα και δύο φορές παγκόσμιο ρεκόρ. Που μετά από όλη αυτή την κούρα ήταν λίγο δύσκολο να γίνει, αλλά όταν είσαι πολύ χαρούμενος και κάνεις αυτό που κάνεις με πολύ αγάπη, νομίζω ότι μπορείς να τα ξεπεράσεις όλα. Την επόμενη χρονιά στο Παγκόσμιο Πρωτάθλημα και έδεισα χρυσό μετάλλιο στα 400 μέτρα και ένα σημαίνιο στα 200 και μία εκθέση στα 100 μέτρα. Έκανα και τρία αγωνίσματα. Πλέον σήμερα ο στόχος μου είναι να συμμετέχω στους Παραολυμπιακούς Αγώνες στο Τόκιο και να κερδίσω το χρυσό μετάλλιο στα 200 μέτρα. Θα κάνω λιγότερα αγωνίσματα, αλλά θα επικεντρωθώ σε, σε μεγαλύτερο στόχο. Αυτή ήταν η ιστορία μου. <laughs> Θέλω να σας ξαναευχαριστήσω. <laughs> και να πω και κάτι τελευταίο. Το μεγαλύτερο επίτευγμα, θεωρώ, από όλα αυτά, είναι τα μηνύματα που λαμβάνω καθημερινά από τον κόσμο, που μπορεί να έχει ένα θεωρητικά ασήμαντο πρόβλημα ή ένα πολύ μεγάλο πρόβλημα. Ε, και να μου λένε, σε ευχαριστούμε πάρα πολύ, γιατί σε παρακολουθούμε και μας δίνεις δύναμη. Αυτό είναι το, το πιο ωραίο πράγμα που έχω πάρει μέχρι σήμερα. Ευχαριστώ πολύ. Perfect. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, you will see him uh, again uh, for the questions and answers. Uh, this is exactly the power of football. Congratulations for all what you have done. Um, the power of football has no, uh, the power of sports has no limits, actually. And uh, he went against all the odds and absolutely made his dream come true. Again, thanks, uh, Mike. So it's my pleasure and honor to also introduce another great speaker, another inspiration, and another champion who is the ex-former uh, um, uh, former player of the Greece uh, basketball national team and the world champion and 11 for campaign ambassador. Michalis, um, I will try to say your family name, Katkiosis. Uh, being one of the modern legends of Greek history, having led both his clubs, league champion in Greece, Spain, Italy, Turkey, and Cyprus, and the national team to the top spot on numerous occasions in his long career. A vocal advocate of the use of sport for social development throughout, throughout his career. After his retirement, He focused his, offer, his efforts in working with academies to inspire the next generation of basketball players in Greece. Please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Michalis on stage.
Καλησπέρα σε όλους. Προτιμώ να μιλάω στα, στη γλώσσα μου στα ελληνικά. Ε, οπότε ζητάω συγγνώμη και την κατανόησή σας. Νομίζω ότι ο, ο Μιχάλης προηγουμένω ε, είναι παράδειγμα για όλους μας. Ό,τι και να πω εγώ ή οποιοδήποτε άλλο ε, είναι πολύ κάτω, πολύ χαμηλά με βάση αυτό που πέρασε και αυτό που μας ε, δίδαξε και μας διδάσκει και θα μας διδάσκει ο, ο αγώνας του Μιχάλη. Πραγματικά η δύναμη που χρειάζεται κάποιος ε, για να κάνει αυτό που έχει κάνει εσύ ε, είναι τεράστια. Εγώ σε ξαναχειροκοτάω πραγματικά. Για μένα είσαι παράδειγμα, για μένα τα παιδιά μου και για όσους ξέρω πραγματικά. Χίλια ευχαριστώ. Ε, η δική μου ιστορία δυστυχώς δεν είναι τόσο χαρούμενο όπως του Μιχάλη, γιατί του Μιχάλη μπορεί να είναι τραγική, αλλά είναι η πιο όμορφη ιστορία που μπορεί να ακούσει κάποιο. Εγώ ξεκίνησα να ασχολούμαι με τον αθλητισμό όπω όλα τα παιδιά που οι γονεί του θέλουν να του πρόξουν σε μια ομάδα, σε σωματικό άθλημα όπω το μπάσκετ, για να μην μπλέξουν σε κακέ παρέ. Η αγωνία όλων των γονιών είναι τα παιδιά του να μην μπλέξουν με κακέ παρέ, με ναρκωτικά, με, με πράγματα τα οποία δεν είναι καλά όπω το έχουν στο μυαλό του οι γονεί. Και εγώ έτσι σκέφτομαι για μου παιδιά, οπότε του καταλαν... κατανοώ απόλυτα. Ε, ομολογώ ότι δεν ξεκίνησα να παίζω μπάσκετ έχοντα στο μυαλό μου ότι θα κάνω καριέρα και νομίζω ότι κανένα όταν ξεκινάει νοήμων άνθρωπο δεν σκέφτεται. Είναι ωραίο να έχει στόχου, να θέτει ε, ε, πράγματα τα οποία θε να πετύχει στο μέλλον, αλλά σαφώ ποτέ δεν ξέρει τι σου επιφυλάσσει η ζωή. Ε, ο λόγο που ξεκίνησα να παίζω μπάσκετ είναι γιατί μου άρεσε πάρα πολύ αυτό που έβλεπα. Και Στη δικιά μα τα χρόνια δεν είμαι τόσο μεγάλο, αλλά δεν είχαμε τι πληροφορίε και, ε, και την πρόσβαση σε τόσα πολλά πράγματα όπω έχουν τώρα τα νέα παιδιά, που είναι πάρα πολύ τυχαία σε αυτό. Ε, το μπάσκετ το βλέπαμε μία-δύο φορέ την, ε, στην εβδομάδα. Η έκρηξη για μα και το κίνητρο για μα ήταν ε, όταν το 1987 η εθνική μα ομάδα, ε, μια πολύ μικρή χώρα, κατανοήσει σα παρακαλώ πολύ το μέγεθο τη Ελλάδα, έτσι, είμαστε 11 εκατομμύρια κόσμο, κατάφερε να πάρει για πρώτη φορά στην ιστορία τη το Πανευρωπαϊκό Ποτάσμα στην Αθήνα. Για όλη τη χώρα ήταν, τα παιδιά ήταν εθνικοί ήρωε. Με την κανονική έννοια των εθνικών ηρωών, γιατί δεν μου αρέσει να χρησιμοποιώ λέξει όπω. Ε, γιατί πολλοί λένε ε, στι τηλεοράσει, στι συνεντεύξει που δίνουν ότι πάμε να κερδίσουμε ένα πόλεμο, πάμε να είμαστε ήρωε που κερδίσαμε. Όχι, αυτέ είναι λέξει άσχημε για μένα. Ο πόλεμο για μένα στο μυαλό μου ε, είναι αποτέλε, έχει σαν αποτέλεσμα πολύ άσχημα πράγματα. Και, Είμαι πολύ χαρούμενος γιατί είμαι πεσβευτής αυτής της οργάνωσης, η οποία ε, δίνει το παράδειγμα σε όλο τον κόσμο για το πώς πρέπει να είναι ο κόσμος. Αγαπημένος, ανεξάρτητα από το χρώμα, από το ύψος, από το βάρος, από ότι αν κάποιος είναι όμορφο ή κάποιος είναι άσχημος. Είμαστε όλοι μαζί και έτσι πρέπει να προχωράμε, αν θέλει το μέλλον μας να, είναι, ε, να, να έχει κάποιο νόημα. Αλλιώ όλο τι κάνουμε υπάρχει, είναι χωρίς λόγο. Τέλος πάντων, Πλέον αυτή τη μικρή παρέντες και με συγχωρείτε. Ε, η πορεία μου ήταν λίγο πολύ αναμενόμενη μέχρι τη στιγμή που έγινε το ΜΠΑΜ. Το 87 για μένα ήταν το ορόσημο. Ήταν όλοι στο δωμάτιο μου υπήρχαν όλες οι αφήσεις όλων των παιδιών που παίζανε μπάσκετ. Τότε στην ομάδα ε, είναι ο λόγο ο οποίο φόραγα το 15 πάντα. Ήταν ο αγαπημένος μου παίκτης ο Φάνης Χρυστοδούλου στην Εθνική Ομάδα και γι' αυτό άρχισε και φόραγα και το 15. Ε, και από εκεί πέρα προσπαθούσαμε να του μοιάσουμε. Όπω κάνουν όλα τα παιδιά, όπω κάνουμε όλοι μα, όχι μόνο όταν είσαι παιδί, ε, όταν θε να πετύχει κάτι. Προσπαθεί να δει ποιο είναι ο κορυφαίο και να του μοιάσει. Να γίνει σαν κι αυτόν. Ναι. Να πάρει κάποια κομμάτια από αυτόν και να, τον, και να τα εντάξει στη δικιά σου προσωπικότητα. Αυτό προσπαθούσα να κάνω κι εγώ. Ε, Χωρί. Δεν θα πετύχει τίποτα από όλα αυτά όμω, αν δεν είχα από πίσω μου του γονεί μου και κυρίω τον πατέρα μου. Ο πατέρα μου ήταν ένα άνθρωπο ο οποίο ήταν αστυνομικό στο επάγγελμα, όπω και οι δύο μου γονεί. Δεν είχε καμία ιδέα με τον αθλητισμό. Ε, αλλά ήταν αυτό ο οποίο με έτρεχε στα ανοιχτά γήπεδα για να μου κάνει προπόνηση μόνο του. Ξαναλέω και πάλι, δεν είχε καμία ιδέα. Ήταν αυτό ο οποίο ε, ήταν από πίσω μου σε κάθε αγώνα μου, σε κάθε προπόνηση. Και είναι ο οποίο νομίζω ότι έχω κάνει αρκετά πράγματα στην καριέρα μου στο μπάσκετ. Μέχρι τώρα πέρα μου έχει πει 7 φορέ μπράβο για ένα παιχνίδι, για μια εμφάνιση. Δεν ξέρω κατά πόσο αυτό είναι σωστό ή όχι, αλλά εμένα με βοήθησε, μου δίνει κίνητρο για να το αποδείξω προφανώ ότι. Κάνει λάθο και ότι μπορεί να γίνω καλύτερο και καλύτερο. Ε, μέσω του μπάσκετ, λοιπόν, ήμουν, είμαι πάρα πολύ τυχερό γιατί μου δόθηκε ευκαιρία πλην τη χώρα μου, στην οποία έπαιξα επαγγελματικά για 7 χρόνια στην πρώτη μου ομάδα, την, την ΑΕΚ, να γνωρίσω και, και άλλε χώρε, άλλε κουλτούρε, 
άλλες γλώσσες, ε, οι οποίες με, με βοήθησαν να κατανοήσω την κουλτούρα κάθε λαού, το πώς σκέφτεται κάποιος άνθρωπος ο οποίος δεν είναι στην, δεν είναι στην πατριώτης μου ε, και το πώς γενικώ δυστυχώς μπαίνεις σε μια δικασία να συγκρίνεις πράγματα για καταστάσεις όσον αφορά τη δικιά σου πατρίδα με μια άλλη πατρίδα, το πώς αντιμετωπίζουν πράγματα για καταστάσεις, άσχημες καταστάσεις, χαρούμενες καταστάσεις ε, και είμαι πάρα πολύ τυχαίος γιατί έμαθα πάρα πολλά πράγματα. Ε, θεωρώ ότι για να κατανοήσεις την κουλτούρα ενός λαού πρέπει να μάθεις τη γλώσσα του. Μόνο έτσι καταλαβαίνει τι θέλει να πει πραγματικά αυτός που μιλάει. Έτσι, στην Ισπανία έμαθα Ισπανικά, στην Ιταλία έμαθα Ιταλικά και ούτε καθεξής με βοήθησαν πάρα πολύ για να καταλάβω πράγματα και να με βελτιώσουν καταρχήν σαν άνθρωπος. Εμείς αυτό που κάνουμε είναι να παίζουμε μπάσκετ και να δίνουμε στον κόσμο χαρά, σαν να είμαστε στο θέατρο. Ε, το λέω συνέχεια, υπάρχουν σημαντικότερα προβλήματα στην ε, ζωή μας. Ε, από, τον, από το να παίζει μπάσκετ, ε, ποδόσφαιρο, να κάνεις πάρα πολλά πράγματα. Εμείς, ευτυχώ έχουμε την ε, τύχη να δίνουμε το παράδειγμα, κάποιο καλό παράδειγμα, κάποιο άσχημο παράδειγμα, ε, στα νέα παιδιά. Και για μένα είναι το πιο σημαντικό από όλα. Τη συμβουλή που δίνω εγώ στα δικά μου τα παιδιά, έχω δύο γιου ε, 10 και 8, ε, είναι δύο πράγματα. Ποτέ να μην κάνουν στους άλλους αυτό που δεν θέλουν να, τους κάνουν, να κάνουν σε αυτούς. Και το δεύτερο είναι να βρουν κάτι, να το αγαπήσουν μόλι τους στην καρδιά και να είναι σίγουροι ότι εγώ, οι γονείς τους, θα είμαστε από πίσω για να τους στηρίξουμε. Νομίζω ότι δεν μπορώ να δώσω κάποια παραπάνω συμβουλή, το να τους πω ότι να διαβάσουν, να, ε, να γίνουν επιστήμονες, οτιδήποτε εξυπακούεται, αλλά εξ, αυτό ε, έχει να κάνει μόνο με τα δικά τους, έλεγα και τα δικά τους πιστεύω. Ε, Ξέρω ότι δεν μιλάω πολύ για τον μπάσκετ και τον αθλητισμό, αλλά μέσω του αθλητισμού έμαθα να μιλάω έτσι και να προσπαθώ να μεταδώσω το, το, τον τρόπο σκέψη μου. Και τώρα νιώθω πάρα πολύ τυχερό γιατί από τη στιγμή που σταμάτησα να ασχολούμαι με τον, με τον μπάσκετ επαγγελματικά, σταμάτησα να παίζω. Ε, σαν προπονητή πλέον έχω να λάβει ε, δύο ακαδημίες, οι οποίε αποτελούνται περίπου από 500 παιδάκια. Και μου αρέσει πάρα πολύ το, το πώ. Καταρχήν τα παιδιά είναι σφουγγάρια, ό,τι και να είναι σφουγγάρια, ό,τι και να του πει, απορροφούν τα πάντα. Ε, και για μένα είναι πολύ σημαντικό γιατί δεν μπορεί να κρυφτεί καταρχήν τα παιδιά. Τα παιδιά έχουν την, ε, την αθωότητα να σε αφοπλίζουν με τι απαντήσει του. Ε, δεν σκέφτονται αν θα σε πειράξει, αν θα σε φέρουν σε δύσκολη θέση. Και γι' αυτό λοιπόν η θέση δικιά μα είναι, είναι πολύ λεπτή, γιατί πρέπει να είμαστε πρώτα παιδαγωγοί και μετά προπονητέ τα παιδιά. Ελπίζω να το καταφέρουμε πολύ καλά στο μέλλον και εγώ και οι συνεργάτε μου και τα παιδιά. Καταρχήν είναι μαζί μα ο Λάζαρο ο Παπαδόπουλο που ήμασταν συμπαίχτε στην ελληνική ομάδα, ε, από του καλύτερου ever παίχτε που έχουν περάσει ποτέ στο πανευρωπαϊκό μπάσκετ. Και ήταν τιμή μου που ήμασταν συμπαίχτε. Έχουμε κάνει πάρα πολλά πράγματα. Ήταν μέλο τη εθνική ομάδα που κέρδισε το πανευρωπαϊκό, που κέρδισε με του Αμερικάνου στην Αμερική, στην, στην Ιαπωνία στο 2006 το παγκόσμιο. Ε, η πορεία όλων μα έχει να κάνει με το χαρακτήρα μα. Και η πορεία του Λάζαρου έχει να κάνει και με τον χαρακτήρα του και είναι και αυτό ένα παράδειγμα προ μίμηση για όλου μα. Όχι μόνο για παιδιά, αλλά για όλου μα. Αυτά ελπίζω να μην σα κούρασα. Δεν μίλησα πάρα πολύ για μπάσκετ, ξαναλέω και πάλι, αλλά και για αθλητισμό. Αλλά μιλά, μου αρέσει να μιλάω για το πώ αισθάνομαι και για το πώ πρέπει να είμαστε εμεί ε, όσον αφορά τα νέα παιδιά. Τα νέα παιδιά μαθαίνουν από εμά, έχουν παραδείγματα από εμά και το μόνο που έχουμε να κάνουμε είναι να του δείχνουμε αγάπη. Ε, να τους δείχνουμε ε, τη σωστή πλευρά της ζωής, όπως είναι όλο αυτό και όχι τάσχημα, και να τους μαθαίνουμε να γίνονται καλύτεροι άνθρωποι. Σας ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ για τον χρόνο σας. Να είστε καλά. Um, it's the time <clears throat> to introduce my third speaker. Uh, um, he's a world FIFA champion in 1998, winner of the Euro 2000, and a winner of the Champions League. He has an outstanding track football records. Very active since he retired. He promotes football in his own country, Oceania, and was quick to visit Haiti shortly after the terrible earthquakes in 2010. He said, I will always remember my visit to Haiti in 2010 with peace and sport. In this shattered country, sport helped various children retain hope for a fairer and more respectful society. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Christian Karambu. Thank 
Carla. Go ahead. Hi, Christian. Honey. I think two footballers, same yes. hair. <laughs> maybe some background Same also. hair as well, maybe. Uh, I don't know if you will, we will have seats or we will uh, talk like this. We can talk like this. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> first of all, my question is, uh, can you please uh, tell us where do you come from? I come from Palestine. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> I think I need to say that I was spe speechless when I saw my two fellows there, uh, two big athletes, and uh, so far I have been maybe, uh, I won some titles, but what they have done was uh, incredible. It's more than a titles. Indeed. Impressive. Um, yes, I came. I was born in New Caledonia, so Oceania, 20,000 kilometers from Europe. When was that? Or oh, you don't want to mention your age? I was 17, <laughs> and now I'm 27. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 17, meaning that uh, you should be as a child. But 17 in my country, in Nylon. You are already built as a man. That's and so far, when I take the first plane to come to Europe, you should do, at that time, 42 hours. That's quite far. So I can say I'm a migrant to Europe. Not a refugee, but a migrant. But to fulfill also my, my dream. Now, actually, we can talk about how did you start playing football in New Caledonia? Talking to my family, for example, we were 18, 18 in my family, so we can play football. 18? We are, yes. 18? Brothers and sisters? Yes, of course. MashaAllah. <laughs> like you in your actually streets. Actually, you can play a whole football, uh, it's a football team with also we are, uh, we with are. The we substitutes. Ha we have a team, we have a music band, we have a football <laughs> club. <laughs> come back to my family, come back to my background. I need to say that uh, from my tradition, I learned how to be able to work together, because we are numerous in the family. How to uh, at least uh, to give a piece of bread to my s sister or to my uh, brother, because we are numerous, so we need to share a small bread or whatever. Mm -hmm. And of course, to respect the oldest, because this is part of my tradition. And this, what they, what they educate myself to be or to become a man, I brought it to Europe also. So. One of your most challenges was just growing up in a modest family. You didn't have much. You, you, you played yes. in the streets, the same story. And uh, how did you manage to have football as a passion, as a dream to move forward? I was fortunate that my father was uh, a sport man. He was a teacher, but every time he tried to put on his scholarship a part of sport in the program of the the uh, um, primary school. Mm -hmm. So every time there's one hour for us to play sport. And so far, you I dedicate myself to play football. And I could football? play cricket because I saw that previous yeah. session they were playing cricket because in New Caledonia also we play cricket, we play rugby. So why you chose football as a way, as a career? I think that everybody had play football. Ball is very common to everyone to play and to share. So Indeed. I start like this, and after that it's like an addiction, like virus. It is a magic, no? It's also magic because it procures your emotion, and I think that uh, today, as if uh, nobody understands, but when you see images, when you see the movement, it's only emotion. It's only what you have and what you gave to people, and this is the value of a sport. And what did, you, uh, what did move you to leave your country and be um, uh, living in the diaspora with many challenges and many circumstances that it yes. is not in your own country? I was 17. I could be El Che Guevara. At the time in my country, there was these political troubles. 
there were violences and my country wanted to be independent. And next November, they will have a, elections. Uh, an election to be or not independent. And in that moment, in that period, it was very dark for myself, for my community. And my parents decided to send me uh, to France. Um, alone. Maybe to dedicate myself to football. So you left alone? I left alone, 17 years old, 42 hours by plane, moving uh, and touching many, many uh, countries as uh, Australia, Singapore, Jakarta, India, and after that, France. So at that moment, maybe, when did you realize that sport is really fundamental to change your life? I didn't realize. Because for me, and for every kid, it's first, it's fun. You need to play football for fun, to make sport for fun. Not to have something behind, but in the end, when I see what I achieve, or when I see what I'm doing, I can see in the eyes of everyone that something happened. I have done something. They have done something. We have done something. Because we understand what's happening. And therefore, yes, I realize that sport has a tremendous power to change our future, to change hopes, to inspire dreams, and to inspire each other. And um, being an immigrant or a foreigner in a, in a, in a foreigner country, mm -hmm. how sport helped you to integrate? Like I said, I came with my luggage, traditional luggage mm -hmm. or education. And so far, to respect each other, I know how to respect. I know to listen, to observe. Because in native environment, you live with the nature. You need to listen to the nature, to the bird, to the wind. As if in, also in Greece, they have also many, many common spirits or spiritual philosophy. Mm -hmm. Goddess of uh, uh, um, Eol or uh, Posidonios. We have also the same in my country. So uh, I believe in spirit. I believe in environment. And wh why I say that? Because this come to me, to Europe, and I just try to adapt myself with the environment, with the mm. culture, with the tradition, and of course, with sport. Because in New Caledonia, we are all amateurs. Mm -hmm. When I came to Europe, it's you another- Became professional. It's professional. And professionalism is more demanding. Sure. And every day, it's a sacrifice because you need to be excellent or better and better to be excellent every day. But actually, this is a great message when we talk about immigrants and refugees, how uh, it is important to integrate into societies yes. through sports, uh, uh, and whether it's football or any kind of sport. And you see the example of the f French national team. True. Mostly 70% of the, of the players were immigrants and foreigners or uh, from grandparents. And, yes. Um, uh, and, and this uh, is what is actually the topic today, investing true. in the human capital for uh, economic development in, uh, in countries uh, wherever, uh, the, uh, where, wherever you move to or in the diaspora. So your contribution was huge actually, being with the French national team, true. going from New Caledonia, yes. proceeding your dream and making a uh, true and play for France in 1998. True. I think that each Atoma, each of us are unique, and we have our unique experience, unique background. And for myself, to stand up, not against France, but to say who I come from, who I am, it was hard for them to understand. But normally, you should understand each other, and sport gives you this opportunity to understand each other, to know better, to have automatism, to fix our automatism, to fix our day, to fix the journey, to fix at least uh, to be the pathway to be a professional. And, uh, and I have stand up against a nuclear war, for example. I have stand up against uh, violence in my country, uh, alcoholism. But this is us 
it's not all semester because I believe in the future, future for our kids, future for mm -hmm. our youth. Mm -hmm. That's great, uh, Christian. Uh, when did you become a champion for peace? And wow. why? <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, already 10 years, 2009 I started. You were uh, the first footballer on board, I guess. Yes, I yeah? think so, yes. I was the first one. Okay. And I'm very proud to be and to, be, and to contribute uh, with the peace and sport in this pathway, in this vision of uh, the Highness uh, Prince Albert and of course uh, Mr. Joel Bouzou. And uh, again, like I, as I said, we are all responsible Indeed. for yeah. space. And uh, through sport, better it is because sport has these values to break all barriers, uh, to be uh, without any dis discrimination, yeah. uh, regardless of race, religion, uh, political status. And this is us. This is uh, the sport. And that's why, because your message is football for all, you decided to go with uh, uh, Mr. Joel Bouzou to, uh, to Haiti in 2010. Yes. After the, can you please tell us uh, or share a story uh, or your experience yeah. about this visit? Haiti was a dramatic and tragical experience, but also full of uh, hope. Because uh, from the drama, from the trauma. With sport, we started to change also uh, the future of these kids without parents, uh, orphans sometimes, but also without uh, 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 vision. Mm -hmm. uh, hope. And hope. And somehow, again, with the NGOs, uh, Peace and Sports uh, make a program, uh, give some tools, uh, games, uh, we provide all these tools just to make them as us, as human beings first. Because when you are a kid, you are innocent. You don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. And the trauma is more than uh, an adult trauma because he don't know what's happening. He don't know what is in front of him. And we need to educate or re-educate them to be in this pathway. But the pathway is just blind. And also allow them to dream, to dare to dream. Again, yes. Because sometimes in cer certain circumstances, we lose the dream and the hopes for the better future. That's why when you come with the chess, when you come with the tennis uh, uh, table, when you come with the ball, you can see in their eyes, their reaction, their behaviors. Their they smiles. want to be part. They want to play. They want to share. And this is uh, incredible, the power of uh, the tools and the power of sport. You have been ambassador for so many organizations mm -hmm. and developing sports and football back in your country, but sure. also in refugee camps. Sure. And uh, Al Zatari camp was one of the examples. Yeah. Could you please tell us more about that uh, in terms of uh, how we can help refugees? Yes, as I said today, we are all responsible uh, to promote value of sport, but also we are all responsible with what's happening in Zatari. We are all citizens of this world. We have voted many political uh, regions, and uh, they know what's happening. And I think that uh, when we see each other, we understand each other. But again, nobody gives an answer or, or why there is a refugee camp. It's impossible to understand. It's impossible to leave these kids like that, without any hope, without any future. But knowing that they are in this area, living in this area, making family in this area, commerce in this area, is impossible. They need to have their own place. They need to have their native place where they belong to. So how? What's your message to politicians, but to uh, policy makers? I came back for the last session when they talk about the Ministry of Defense. Usually when you talk about the pyramid of the uh, structure of any uh, uh, state or government, First is the defense. Defense of for what? We are all human beings. Why we need to make defense bigger than what we expect? I understand uh, the geopolitic, uh, geopolitical reasons. But again, we want commerce. We, want, we forgot and we f still forget that human being first should be in front. And maybe there we can understand and give solution 
to these camps and to these wars because we provoke the wars. Climate, okay, only God provoked climate. But at well, least, yeah, uh, uh, sometimes we, we, yes, true. Yeah. But, but uh, like I said, we need to think really about who we are today. Because we have evolved from Lucy, for example, if I may say Lucy, the first uh, human being, till today. Yeah. Well, he's highlighting here the role of women, actually, True in also. societies and uh, yes. in decision-making positions. So you think when we have more women in uh, the political entity, we can have a better world? Yeah. I think so. I think so. The thing is, uh, if I see here, who can give lives? Tell me. Of course, women. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it deserves a clap, right? <laughs> so, you know, being a role model, of course, a yes. champion for peace and a role model, you inspire generations mm -hmm. of people. Your story as such is a great inspiration. But when you go to those people and meet with them, what is your simple message for those people, like vulnerable people who has lost everything and they thought they were they thinking that tomorrow yes. might never come even first of all i try to be like them to be in their position to understand better who they are and what they need and i have been this i have made that with some documentaries i have been many uh, countries and i went to see the natives to went to see the refugees and they have their own answers to the environment to what's happening and, and it's unique, every way is unique, but again, the need is to live and to survive. We need to live, not to survive. And do you think athletes like us can influence that change? Yes. Everywhere I have been, I, bring, I brought with me a ball. And every time I finish the documentary, I just take out the ball and I say, can we play? Everyone wanted to play, to share this moment with me. And they didn't know who I am. They don't know who I am. In the end, they understood who I was, uh, who I am. So uh, I came there not as a world champion or a sportman. I was there as myself. So you believe that we all sports champions and role models, we can change of course. the world and influence politicians and countries to or have a better world through sports? Yes, I think that today we, in also in politics, they add now today Ministry of Culture, where sport is inside. But I think sport should have a, his own ministry and big role in society. Because every company, every CEO's company, they ask sportmen to come to talk about teamwork, to talk about marketing. But still, again, it's teamwork, it's passion, it's emotion, is uh, uh, try to overtake stress. This is sport values. And we need to do that everywhere in the world. Not only on the pitch, Not but on the pitch. also off the pitch. And your role as a special advisor of uh, Olympiakos, mm -hmm. um, how can sporting clubs change the game and uh, play a bigger social role for benefits of the society? For example, on Athens principles. Yes, four years ago, uh, Mr. Manakis has a vision, the president of Olympiakos, with uh, the uh, Harvard University to take this initiative to create the Athens principles where I mentioned the key points that everybody can uh, have access to sport, regardless of their gender, political status, religion, uh, physical capabilities, and so on, to be together with some NGOs, to implement all this together, and to make, to give hope uh, to the future. That's great, um, Christian. Actually, we all agree uh, in our panel today that uh, sports definitely has the power to change lives and influence yes. policymakers, politicians, and... Uh, you can see Mandela, what he has done in South Africa with rugby. It's incredible. It's a great example, example. 
and mother for us. But also it can, take a, it can tackle many issues that we are facing in mm -hmm. the world today with a lot of inequality, injustice and violence. Mm -hmm. It can yes. tackle uh, all these issues in terms of sexism, racism, uh, anti-discrimination and uh, 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 everything. Sports has this uh, enormous, uh, yes. uh, fascinating role. And that's why we are here today to send this message to the world from yes. the beautiful island in uh, Rhodes to, with one... Yes. One passion, of one course. message. Thanks to the governor for hosting us here. But for sure, that I think that Rodos also is uh, also uh, a place where sport has begun also. Uh, we talk always about Athens, but also Rodos has made also uh, many athletes. So deliver many, provide many athletes. So, so far, I'm very happy to be here also and talk about the value of our sport. Great. So we all, uh, we are all have the same message. The impossible is? If we have Possible? the mental strength as Mike, I think that we can do something. If he world. managed to do it, we all of can course. manage to do it. Yes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I stop. I stop by Wait. Oops. So now I would like to invite again to stage Mike and Michalis, or both Michalis actually, <laughs> for questions. Um, ladies and gentlemen, here is our impressive panelist, and I would like you to uh, welcome them again on stage. Thanks again for each one of you, really impressive stories. I'm also touched myself, and uh, I'm inspired by your, uh, your courage and by your resilience and by your passion for sports to, in, to change the world with your capacity and uh, with your uh, uh, with the, 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 the limitation that even you had, and, but you came against all the odds in each way to overcome all these challenges. Um, questions? Ah, yeah. yeah, please, the mic there. Hi, Mich Hi Michalis, this is Nabil from uh, Jordan Basketball. My question to you is, how many times do you say bravo to your children? <laughs> Every time. <laughs> how is that different from the way you were brought up and what we see today in the upbringing of children, especially in sports? It's different years now. Children, as I said before, they have a lot of uh, information. They can see everything uh, in lifetime. And uh, if you don't say good job to the kids, or bravo, or uh, go for it, or don't worry. Don't worry is the most important than bravo for me. Or you can make a mistake, don't worry. Don't, don't, don't be afraid to make a mistake. They don't succeed, never. Not in basketball or sports, in life. So for me, the only point to, the, the only thing that I want to say to teach the children is of course to play basketball, but first to be a, a human person, human being, a right human being. That's the most important. Um, and yeah, please, yeah, madam. <clears throat> the mic here. I don't have a question, but I'd like to appreciate. I really appreciate what you are doing. It's very, it's great. And you, what you are doing is to change this world because now we are always listening that there are conflicts, wars everywhere. And with what you are doing with sport, we can establish and implement peace. I think we need to give hopes to children and we need to change the mentality. We need to accept each other. We need to listen to each other. And it's great for us because now we can I mean, recognize one person 
not because he is white or he's black, but he was Muslim or Muslim is, I mean, what we want to, I mean, to teach our children that they have to, to be confident in themselves first. They have to, to, to look to other models and you are models for the, the young generation. You are models, especially for politicians. You can together, you can play together. Sometimes you cannot in the same team, but after, the, I mean, after the play, you'll be, you, can, you, you stay together, you laugh together, you can, I mean, this is what we want to do, we want to listen. And I think we have, for, for you, Mr. Joel, is how we can teach this, how we can say to the politician, I mean, sport is this, I mean, one, but the best way to establish peace everywhere. Because now we see what is happening, I mean, and especially for, I mean, refugees, we can discover, I mean, magnificent uh, champions everywhere. So we have to take care about them. Thank you. Thank you so much for your job. And I really appreciate what you are doing. And I'm so, I mean, so happy to listen to you, Mike. It's a, for me, it's, uh, it's fantastic. And thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to congratulate to all the panelists. My name is Sasha Tsere. I'm came, coming from Croatian Olympic Academy. It's really uh, beautiful to be here and to listen to you all and to learn from you. I don't know which one uh, should I say is the best or what uh, motivates me. But I have one question for, the, for Mike. Uh, coming from the also from the sports background, being a sportsman athlete and also uh, dealing with injuries, uh, your story is uh, really inspiring. Uh, but I, I would like to know maybe if you could say what was going through your mind uh, when your uh, when your ability at the field or in training when you reached that point that you said, "Okay, I'm I will do it." and I will be the, uh, the elite athlete. But obviously in the training, a lot of things doesn't go like you mentioned in a presentation as you like, and there is falling and uh, get, getting up. So if you can just say mentally what was going through your head and how did you compensate and how did you uh, came beyond this um, situation that uh, in some points, it's not encouraging and after all you came and you are the best in your sport and you are winning medals and uh, I really want to congratulate you once more. But from the uh, psychological point of view in the training, if you can uh, say a few things about it, it will be uh, a great thing to, to, to hear. Thank you very much. I think uh, my love of uh, running it was the power of uh, my today's result. Uh, it was very difficult. I have uh, too many difficulties, but uh, in my mind, I had only one thing, to run again. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions? <clears throat> Uh, thank you all for your inspiring stories. Um, Katerina have uh, designed implemented football programs. We saw one of them from Mr. Peso Kokalis before, uh, Hope Refugee, so football programs for refugees, adults and children. Um, nevertheless, my favorite sport always has been basketball. And I was wondering if you know any relevant activities for refugees, uh, social inclusion through basketball, <coughs> or who would be willing to support something like that. Thank you. 
Uh, actually, I don't uh, in Greece uh, right now. They, I think they try to play some games just to, first of all, the people start knowing about what happened. And, uh, but uh, they need time. And uh, you know, in Greece, really we need time to do things. This is very bad. But uh, it's my mind, and I believe that uh, the Federation in general, they have uh, the plan to, to put some games or to make like a championship so everybody can, can be involved inside. Uh, I hope that uh, th th that happens <coughs> soon, very soon, because uh, it's, um, it's, it's very sad that we don't have this kind of uh, opportunity to see that, that children playing like other children. Any other questions? Um, hello, everybody. Thanks. Um, as others have said, <coughs> your really inspiring talks so far. In the session previously, I'm Rimla Achter from Session 2. Um, in the session previously, we spoke about soft power, and although I spoke a lot about, obviously, the work that I'm doing with Muslim women, a lot of my work is broadly across sport for development and using the soft power of athletes in particular. If you look at the power of sport, oftentimes a lot of it does come from our athletes themselves. But when I speak to athletes, one of the um, issues that a lot of them have is when they're playing, um, they find it difficult to speak out about issues um, that they're, they're passionate about. We've seen recently Hector Bellerin talk about the need for footballers to use their soft power to speak out about things that they're passionate about, whether it's the environment, peace, whatever it is. Um, and I wondered what you thought uh, the panel thought about what more can the sports industry do to support athletes um, to be able to speak out positively um, in this space if we're talking about investing in human capital then how do we invest in our athletes? Um, Christian, would you like to answer this question? Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Today I think that uh, FIFA and UEFA uh, has a program of uh, social responsibility so <coughs> Every time in uh, the uh, UEFA headquarters, there is a tournament for refugees where uh, we give them, um, of course, uh, the hospitality in Switzerland uh, and to have maybe uh, IDs and uh, to be a uh, care and, and, and stay in Switzerland. Uh, so far, we uh, are trying to uh, uh, make that tournament uh, maybe we can have some talent, uh, but it's another matter. Uh, the first thing is to give them the opportunity to play football, but also to be able to go to school, to be able to, uh, to adapt themselves to the new environment they have. Uh, in FIFA also, of course, uh, there is a foundation where uh, today uh, so many ambassadors are trying to uh, talk about uh, the values of sport and uh, through that values to implement uh, uh, our role in the social, as a social responsibility. Actually, that's, um, that's a really a good point uh, uh, to talk about government bodies because <coughs> they play an uh, enormous role to change uh, many things in, the, in societies and in communities uh, worldwide. For example, uh, you mentioned UEFA Foundation, but also FIFA has a foundation too uh, that works with 211 member associations to empower those athletes and give them the opportunities and the chances to excel and break down their barriers, uh, uh, whether uh, they come from different backgrounds, different nationalities, ethnicities, ethnicities color. We see that football has this power through those organizations to change their lives. And also, like my role in yes. FIFA is part of this as, as well, since I'm uh, working there uh, for six years now, uh, to, uh, to see uh, the, the, how football has this power to change through the programs we are implementing worldwide uh, in member associations uh, yes. and beyond. Also, to have ambassadors like Christians and many others helps to, um, to, uh, to spread those messages and bring hope to societies and build a better future. That's some concrete example is the uh, refugee uh, camp in Zatari. Uh, we uh, uh, make this donation with the, the UEFA Foundation, uh, with of course the Prince Ali Hussein, sorry. And uh, we have been there and when, we, when I see again the kids and the parents that they have this tool, it's just incredible for them. Uh, in the desert they have this uh, beautiful uh, camp, uh, 
playground, sorry, no camp, playground, where they can play football, where they can be together, mix uh, girl and boys, and this was an uh, incredible experience also for myself. Yeah, please. Hello, my name is Jill Diamond. I'm with the World Boxing Council. And we're in 166 countries, and we have programs like this that address everything from domestic violence to the ecology to whatever ambassadors. So I'm very much one with you, as is Alex. But my one question to you as athletes, they say that giving back is an obligation, but we know that it's a privilege. How do you convince other athletes to do what you're doing and what is your most, the most gratification you get out of doing what you do? Please. You want <laughs> I think uh, the smile of the kids. If they don't feel perfect with that, we cannot do nothing. After everything is worse. If, uh, if they come uh, to see what we do, and uh, when they see the smile of the kids, the happiness, of uh, their, in their eyes, and they don't feel perfect, and they don't want to continue what we do, after it, we can do nothing more. That's the most important thing for me. Um, I believe, uh, actually, to give them the courage, because, um, you know, we live in a, an insecure world sometimes, and we face a lot of challenges in our lives, and sometimes we have a, a, our self-esteem, it's important, and confidence, uh, to have to ensure that other athletes will have the courage to stand up to what they believe in. I think it's important to stand up for what we believe in, to tackle those issues, whether it's uh, uh, discrimination or racism or gender equity, or it's important that athletes have the courage to stand up and send a powerful message to the politicians, to the, uh, to the countries, to communities, to others, to empower uh, people uh, in, in such a uh, a courageous way and, and that's I, I think a little bit of uh, the challenges we face the courage because we are afraid from the system we are afraid from the uh, uh, from the insecurities around us it's important through courage and through um, what we have achieved to pass on this message and make them fight for their rights and for their opportunities uh, Christian you wanted yes, to, to add, add to add is just that today we have a a new tool, new platform is the virtual internet. So, so far we can communicate, we can spread the message and maybe some of them will be inspired and they will come to the family and to provide hope. Social media. Other questions? We still have... Yes. Yeah, please, Dad. Um, uh, uh, I'm Abdul Haq Faiz uh, from Rugby 2018, Libya. Uh, I have a personal question for uh, Captain Mike. Uh, you said uh, you said you traveled to France, and your age 17 years old. Yes. Okay. Uh, how how save it? How how did it save it yourself from drugs and alcohol? Another thing. Does football yes. protect you? Yes. Thank you. Okay. As I said, uh, I was fortunate to be or to live in a peaceful place as New Caledonia is an island, and there we don't have any uh, product uh, as alcohol, and uh, all of this was imported, so we don't produce this kind of uh, beverage. And so far, I was uh, bred like that, so. Uh, uh, it was uh, fair for myself to achieve uh, the goal I wanted and the dream I wanted to fulfill. And uh, so far, the environment gave me this uh, opportunity. And after that, to adapt my body, my organism, to the professionalism. Because it's two different uh, environments when you are amateur and when you are professional. Because you need to do more. And I think that uh, the best example is here. <laughs> Uh, because you need to have this mental uh, strength, but also the capability to understand uh, what's happening around yourself, what you are doing yourself, if you are doing in a good pathway or not. And uh, yes, I was uh, lucky that uh, 
uh, alcohol was far, uh, smoke was far, and so on. Temptation could be after also, but. So we are running out of time. Just uh, to <laughs> so wrap up, uh, one last message from each uh, speaker to the audience uh, and to the world, and maybe to uh, policymakers through sports. That's we start first. with Michalis. <laughs> He's first. Well, to the world. I think we really represent the world, and sport represents the world because uh, when we see today the followers of Messi, of Cristiano, or uh, Hussein Bolt, and so on, you can see that there are billions of followers, billions uh, be, uh, have been inspired by so many. Uh, athletes and so far we represent that and uh, we represent this emotion, we represent this attraction and we need to do that for the best, best of our country and our planet. Mike? Please. My message is that follow your dreams and never give up. Perfect. My message is uh, for, for us, for, for the parents. Uh, leave your kids, let's leave our kids actually, uh, be better than us, because uh, most of the parents want to be the same, the, their kids want to be the same like, uh, like, like, the, like the parents. Uh, our kids is the future, is, are the future of this world, so let's help them, push them, give them everything that they, w that they want, that, that they need, to make us, to make the world better. That's my message. It's great, so together we are stronger and uh, together we can make our dreams come true and together we can make the impossible possible. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to our panel and thanks for the panelists here. We take a picture. Thank you. Please, another round of applause for all the panelists from all the sessions that we've seen so far. And our moderators, of course. They have been a source of inspiration, and I, th I hope you will all leave this room motivated. Uh, before we go for lunch that will last for one hour, I would like to invite you all to join us in the ancient Stadium of Rhodes this afternoon for networking activities, a diplomacy event, and a Greek cultural event. Please note that the buses will leave at 2.30 from the entrance of the hotel. Excuse me? 2.30. That's the time I have. For all of you who wish to attend the Decision Making Roundtable, you have to attend it at the Nafsika room at 2.30. And also, for tonight's event, please do not forget to bring your invitations for the gala. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.